guys, we're reading chapter 10 and 11 today. Chapter 10, it's on page 48. Stanley had no trouble falling asleep, but morning came much too quickly. Every muscle and joint in his body ached as he tried to get out of bed. He didn't think it was possible, but his body hurt more than it did the day before. It wasn't just his arms and back, but his legs, ankles, and waist also hurt. The only thing that got him out of bed was knowing that every second he wasted meant he was one second closer to the rising of the sun. He hated the sun. He could hardly lift his spoon during breakfast. And then he was out on the lake, his spoon replaced by a shovel. He found a crack in the ground and began his second hole. He stepped on the shovel blade and pushed on the very back of the shaft with the base of his thumb. This hurt less than any trying to this hurt less than trying to hold the shaft with his blistered fingers. As he dug, he was careful to dump the dirt far away from the hole. He needed to save the area around the hole for when his hole was much deeper. He didn't know if he'd ever get that far. X-Ray was right. The second hole was the hardest. It would take a miracle. As long as the sun wasn't out yet, he removed his cap and used it to help protect his hands. Once the sun rose, he would have to put it back on his head. His neck and forehead had been badly burned the day before. He took it one shovel at a time and tried not to think of the awesome task that lay ahead of him. After an hour of or so, his sore muscles seemed to loosen up a bit. He grunted as he tried to stick his shovel into the dirt. His cap slipped out from under his fingers and the shovel fell free. He let it lie there. He took a drink from his canteen. He guessed that the water truck should be coming soon, but he didn't finish all the water just in case he was wrong. He learned to wait until he saw the truck before drinking the last drop. The sun wasn't up yet. But his rays arced over the horizon and brought light to the sky. He reached down to pick up his cap, and there was there next to it saw, he saw a wide, flat rock. As he put the cap on his head, he continued to look down at the rock. He picked it up. He thought he could see the shape of the fish fossilized in it. He rubbed out the dirt, and the outline of the fish became clearer. The sun peeked over the horizon, and he could see actually see tiny lines where every one of the fish's bowl, bones had been. He looked at the barren land all around him. True, everyone referred to this area as the lake, but it was still hard for him to believe that it was a dry wasteland once full of water. Then he remembered that Mr. Sir and Mr. Bedinsky both said, if he dug up anything interesting, he should report it to them. If the warden liked it, he would get the rest of the day off. He looked back and down at the fish. He found his miracle. He continued to dig, though very slowly, as he waited for the water truck. He didn't want to bring attention to his find, afraid that one of the other boys might try to take it from him. He tossed the rock face down beside his dirt pile as if he had nothing special. A short while later, he saw the cloud of dirt heading across the lake. The truck stopped and the boys lined up. They always lined up in the same order. Stanley realized no matter who got there first, X-Ray was always at the front of the line. Then came armpit, squid, zigzag, magnet, and zero. Stanley got in the line behind zero. He was glad to be in the back, so no one would notice the fossil. His pants had very large pockets, but the rock still made a bulge. Mr. Bedinsky filled each boy's canteen until Stanley was the only one left. I found something, Stanley said, taking it out of his pocket. Mr. Bedinsky reached for Stanley's canteen, but Stanley handed him the rock instead. What's this? It's a fossil, said Stanley. See the fish? Mr. Bedinsky looked at it again. See... You can even see all those little boats, said Stanley. Interesting, said Mr. Bedinsky. Let me have your canteen. Stanley handed it to him. Mr. Bedinsky filled it and then returned it. So, do I get the rest of the day off? What for? You know, you said if I found something interesting, the warden would give me the day off. Mr. Bedinsky laughed at the, and gave the fossil back to Stanley. Sorry, Stanley. The warden is, isn't interested in fossils. Let me see that, said Magnet, taking the rock from Stanley. Stanley continued to stare at Mr. Bedinsky. Hey, Zig, dig this rock. Cool, said Zigzag. Stanley saw his fossil being passed around. I don't see nothing, said X-Ray. He took off his glasses, wiped them on his dirty clothes, and put them back on. See? Look at the little fish, he said, armpit. We're on chapter 11. Stanley returned to his hole. It wasn't fair. Mr. Podinsky had even said his fossil was interesting. He slammed a shovel into the ground and pried up another piece of earth. After a while, he noticed X-Ray had come by and was waiting, wanting him to dig. Hey, caveman, let me talk to you a second, X-Ray said. Stanley put his shovel down and stepped out of his hole. Say, listen, said X-Ray. If you find something else, give it to me, okay? Stanley wasn't sure what to say. X-Ray was clearly the leader of the group, and Stanley didn't want to get on his bad side. You're new here, right, said X-Ray. I've been here for almost a year. I've never found anything. You know, my eyesight's not so good. No one knows this, but you know why my name's X-Ray? Stanley shrugged his shoulder. 
It's Pig Latin for Rex. That's all. I'm too blind to find anything. Stanley tried to remember how Pig Latin worked. I mean, X-Ray went on, why should you get the day off when you've only been here a couple of days? If anybody gets a day off, it should be me. It's only fair, right? I guess, Stanley agreed. X-Ray smiled. You're a good guy, K-Man. Stanley picked up his shovel. The more he thought about it, the more he was glad and he glad that he agreed to let X-Ray have anything he might find. If he was going to survive at Camp Green Lake, it was far more important that X-Ray think he was a good guy than it was for him to get the day off. Besides, he didn't expect to find anything anyway. There probably wasn't anything of interest out there, and even if there was, he'd never been able to he'd never be that able to call you could call lucky. He slammed his blade into the ground, then dumped another shovel full of dirt out. It was a little surprising, he thought, that X ray was the leader of the group, since he obviously wasn't the biggest or the toughest. In fact, except for Zero, X ray was the smallest. Armpit was the biggest. Zigzag may have been taller than Armpit, but that was only because of his neck. Yet Armpit and all the others seemed to be willing to do whatever X-Ray asked of them. As Stanley dug up another shovel full of dirt, it occurred to him that Armpit wasn't the biggest. He, the caveman, was bigger. He was glad they called him caveman. It meant that they accepted him as a member of their group. He would have been glad even if they called him barfback. It was really quite remarkable to him. At school, bullies like Derek Dune used to pick on him, yet Derek would be scarce senseless but, but by any of the boys here. As he dug his hole, Stanley thought of what it would be like if Derek had to fight Armpit or Squid. Derek wouldn't stand a chance. He imagined what it would be like if they became good friends with all of them, and then for some reason they all went to school, went to his school, and then Derek tried to steal his notebook. Just what do you think you're doing, asked Squid, as he slams his head, hands into Derek's smug face. Caveman's our friend, says Armpit, grabbing him by the shirt collar. Stanley played the scene over and over again in his mind, each time watching another boy from Group D beat up Derek. It helped him dig his hole and ease his own suffering. Whatever pain he felt was being felt ten times worse by Derek.